It's going to be challenging because they, they're fighting this. They're fighting. This is Camp Kennedy. Action. What's going on, everyone? Ken here, and uh, today we're going to be setting up some new lizards. But we got a special guest camera person. Go ahead and show everyone who it is. What? Hey, what's going on? Hey, yeah, I'm really excited to see because he's also he's proved invaluable not only for his skills on the camera but uh, some ideas. So we've got some new rocket ones. Um, let's move out. We're going to walk and talk and get this thing going. So what's going on is I got a call from one of my Patreon supporters, uh, Dave, a guana Dave, and he had a pair of Lewisai uh, blue Cayman iguanas and a pair of rhinoceros iguanas. And both of those animals Lighting. Were, were... Tom, cut this out. How's the shutter? Is the shutter open fully? Because I've been having a problem. There we go. All right, Tom, roll. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? So this Patreon supporter of mine, uh, Iguana Iguana Dave, really cool dude, uh, had some blue iguanas, the Lewis eye iguanas, and he also had a pair of rhino iguanas that he got from Tide Park a few years ago. But guess what? He just couldn't handle them. They're getting bigger, and they're lunatics. So they needed a new home. The funny thing is, this guy only lived about 10 miles away from me. So this morning while I was at the gym, I randomly get a call uh, and I went and picked up some new Camp Kennan members and you can hear them scurrying around in here. So we're gonna set up their enclosure first. I'm gonna walk through it and this is gonna be a fun video because it's how to set these guys up indoors. And the reason I'm setting these guys up indoors, you hear how mental they are? These guys are lunatics, trust me. I already got scratched up by them. I might even get bit by them before the end of the show. But anyhow, the reason I'm setting them up indoors is because they're so flighty. I don't have a large enough uh, cage that I can walk into yet, but we will be building one in the future for them that I'm afraid that they'll run out of the cage and get lost out in the wilderness here in South Florida. So we are gonna bring them back inside or out of the sun right now and then we're going to start building for you guys i want to show you guys what you can do with some really cool zoom ed products like number one their iguanarium now they sent me a bunch of these a while back this one was given to me by dave oh it comes in this beautiful box check this out a little bit of an unboxing video paul i love to but see it in kind of a haphazard way all right, awesome. So you did that the, faster than anyone I've ever seen open a box. Really? Yeah. It's on account that I uh, very impressive. Oh, let's see. This is what the aquarium looks like, the iguana aquarium. So basically, you guys have seen them on my channel before. I've built the ones I need already, but this is how it comes shipped to you. It's fantastic if you guys have smaller lizards, which is what I've got. Uh, they do uh, facilitate some large iguanas, but my personal recommendation is if you have a larger iguana it's a good place for him to kind of hang out when you're not home but i'd let the animal out so you could walk around and kind of be a little bit more free roaming but there's the iguana area we're going to show you how to set everything up right now so shout out to zoom Ed for hooking it up because we're going to be using a lot of their products today first and foremost we got these we've got some awesome zoom Ed lighting all right right here we got these strips that i'm breaking out that are going to have our uvb and uh we also have don't tell don't tell Sophia, but we got some Christmas stuff from Zoomed. Check it out, dude. So they sent us a bunch of stuff. This is some random bathroom that I have in the garage. It's just like a third bathroom. It's just, no, the kids don't even know about it. So anyway, we've got some really cool Zoomed stuff, uh, but we're gonna need this ceramic uh, heat emitter. And I've also got this deep dome fixture that we're gonna need for uh, both lizards. So we're gonna keep two and two together. You'll see what I'm gonna talk about in a second. And then uh, I think I've got all I need uh, we've got cypress mulch in there, and we're going to just go outside and get some branches, and that'll be how we dress this whole enclosure up. All right, very, very cool. Let's bring this stuff in, and I'll show you the assembled one areas. But Paul and I modified them. Did some touch-ups. Yeah, we're just, we're making things a little bit more interesting. So here's where they're going in my old office. This is going to become a new um, Camp Kennan studio. Lots has been happening here in the old camp in situation. So what we did was, these are ones that I had assembled, but Paul and I came up with a really cool idea. I had some of this corrugated drainage. We modified the cages. I've got two rhino iguanas, and they're a little bit larger than the Lewis eye. Um, so I wanted to give them more room. So what I did is I took two of these and we connected it with this tube. So the iguanas are gonna be able to find this and they're just gonna be able to wander back and forth. And let's say the male and female get into a squabble, as sometimes happens. Well, if they do that, 
then the female can kind of go over to her side and she can get away from the male. And if it gets really bad, I can just kind of block them off. But like I said, the reason they're inside is because look, if I open this thing up and one of them shot out and into the grass or into the bushes, they would be gone. So that's why we're doing everything indoors in this uh, episode of Camp Cannon. And uh, it's good because this will show you guys how to, you can modify these things. All right, what do you say? Now we could have also connected these, but it would have taken a lot more work than just kind of chopping out a circular hole in each one of those and adding that. I like the ingenuity of it. What do you think, Paul? I like it, I like it a lot. Very cool. All right, so what we need first is I'm gonna go get some of the mulch. I went to your local home and proof. Watch, watch. Sorry, that's, that's the Camp Kennan photography dude. area. Sorry, dude. Sorry, Tom. The photography area, man. That's all of our equipment. <laughs> we also have some nice pictures of baby uh, alligators. Baby alligators. Yes. Um, it's a, just a baby Pecatino. Yeah, I was thinking about, like, what do you think? Should I give this to Kyle for Christmas? What do you think? 100%. Yeah, totally. 100 Okay, cool. Anyway, what do you give the guy who's got uh, crocodiles? You give him a crocodile picture. All right, so I went and I grabbed some cypress mulch. You can get this from your local uh, home, home goods center. All right, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So let's go. Let's go get this going now. One thing you gotta do, is the lighting bad right here? No, it's pretty good. It's pretty good? Yeah, okay. it's good, One man. thing you gotta do is when you're keeping animals inside, is make sure you don't upset your wife. Now you see this stuff on my shoulder? If this stuff pours out all oh, over the yeah. all over the place, you don't I'm, want that. I'm getting in trouble. I got a wife now, I gotta really think ahead. And this will also help some of the younger viewers who have parents. So let's try not to mess the place up. Okay, but we should have better lighting. Okay, the lights don't work. Well, that's because I was the electrician and uh, I didn't do a good job. But I like to use the Cypress mulch for Cyclora because it's inexpensive and I don't worry about impactions with it. Of course, we're gonna feed these animals uh, entirely with um, bowls. So there should be no food on the ground. And we're not gonna use a lot of this. And one of the things you need to come up with when doing the uh, iguana ariums is a little clip that holds this up. Uh, we don't have that, but we do have Paul. So Paul's gonna hold that while I put some of the cypress mulch in. And uh, it's not rain science, not rocket science, everybody. We put a little bit in, and we're gonna spread it around. And uh, that should do it, to be honest. Yes. Oh, I love fresh, the smell of fresh cypress mulch. It's, it's moist, it's got some humidity in it. Oh, they're gonna love it. They're gonna just wander around in there, and soon it'll be filled with little poops that you'll have to clean out. But I think that's a nice amount right there of cypress mulch. Very good. The other cool thing we're gonna have to do in a minute when we get the rest of the cypress mulch out is get a little more furniture for them to climb on. And that's the real fun part, guys. I'm sure you guys love, you know, kind of designing little habitats for your animals. And all the time, I always go on and on and on about knowing what your specific animal needs. What kind of habitat does the species you're keeping require? So rock iguanas, Cuban iguanas, and Cayman, Cayman Island iguanas are actually, um, they're from Caribbean islands. These islands uh, are more dry than you'd think. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of humidity uh, on these islands. In certain areas they live kind of in rocky areas. They're ground iguanas, rock iguanas. But when they're young, they do like to climb and perch. Um, when they get older, they're a little bit more cumbersome. They don't like to climb too high unless they're trying to get away from danger, but even still, they'll usually go into one of their burrows. So I am gonna have some larger logs. I may have to use the old chainsaw to get some ready, but right now we're gonna cut and we're gonna go outside and see what we can find for these guys to climb on. Let's do it. All right, we're outside. Uh, he's getting all artistic, which is nice, but uh, we are gonna look for some branches that I can use for the furniture for the iguanas. So as I mentioned, when they're younger, they like to climb and perch, and I'm gonna set their basking area up high because there's a nice little shelf that they can perch on. Now, we have this one. This is a good one that I can reuse, which will be uh, super easy for these guys to get on. What about that thing, the black tub? Well, this, is, this black thing here is just basically a little snake hide, but I'm not gonna use that because uh, I think we could find something better. I am gonna use these bowls. Two water bowls. Two water bowls, we need those, so I'll grab these. Uh, sorry about the mess, everybody. It's kind of been crazy and cold here, and I've been running around like a lunatic, but uh, and now even this was sprung on me. But now, guys, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna build? What are we gonna make? Hmm, 
I might have to get my chainsaw. You guys know how I love to use that chainsaw. All right, let's go figure it out. All right, we got the chainsaw. You guys remember when I went to Fred's house and you guys were giving me a lot of grief for how I used the chainsaw. Well, I'm still not too safe with it, but... Oh, I like when that happens to me. I love it. Come on, let's go find something to hack off. Um, I was thinking maybe we use... I know I need to trim some of my mango trees, but then Kate's allergic to mango sap, so that might not be good. Cannon, I got one. Yeah, right. It's right there. No, no. I'm that one right there. We don't use we don't use pine. Oh. No pine. All right. I think it's gonna be the mango. Prime? Perfect. Perfect. We need one thick enough though, we'll like one. that one. This one right here. Yeah. So, all right, I'm gonna sacrifice this this little guy, but it's good to prove. <laughs> hit my tortoise look at this Woo! I'm an idiot I get an idiot award for not looking before I chop it down but we got out of trouble all right now some of you guys worry about oh no what if you have mites or something there's nothing on this wood these animals are going outside uh, what you can also do if you really wanted to make sure nothing happened to this most of you guys would probably be using smaller pieces of wood you can wrap it in aluminum foil Put it in your oven and cook it for like a half an hour and then that'll kill any pathogens that might be on it. I'm not worried. I'm a little bit of a cowboy in that regard. So let's start trimming off. That's a nice one. Now I want to pull this up trim off that edge. Make it, want to make a cleaner cut, Paul. Watch your little feet, Paul. Ah! Are you okay? I'm good, man. Did, anything in your eyes? Nope. You're good? I don't think there's anything in my eyes. No, good, that's good. We're good? Yep, right. good. Um, I got drenched with shedding. I, I really need a new blade. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> oh boy. All right, now I want to just get rid of this. I need a new blade. This blade's shot. I've been doing a lot of work with, uh, chain rather, chain shot. That's good. I think we're pretty pretty good, man. All right, that's it. Now we just carry the stuff and we're gonna go figure out a way to put it in there. And I like this it. one. Yeah, I like that one too. That's a good one because you could set that one up on like the bottom. that, dude. Oh that's my goodness. That's pretty rad, goodness. that's pretty rad. But if you do it this way, another one, we gotta set it up to where it'll hold the other one. And then you oh, got and then like, it goes up. Yeah, it'll go up. So I think that's a cool look. And we may be able to do the same thing with that one. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in our little wheelbarrow cart, rather. And get the other one. And we're going to wheel our way. Thank you, sir. It's I so almost nice threw it, but there's just tortoises everywhere. Yeah, I know. There's, there's so many. It's so nice having someone help me. I'm always alone, Paul. It's very sad. Where's the wife? Uh, she's, she should be coming home any minute now with the lunatics. The children and uh, that'll be fun because they love you and uh, there you go all right let's get out of here all right we gotta get back inside I'd like to have most of this done before Kate gets home this way she can't tell me to stop yeah she doesn't do that she's pretty cool wait so what happens if this is inside and she's allergic to mango no nah, no big deal you have to touch it uh, uh. so she's <laughs> not gonna really be just touching. the lizards will be touching I'm a little concerned how big is this one I hope I don't need my chainsaw again. What we'll do is we're probably going through the top like this, you see? Uh, I don't even think we'll need that little base thing that I was talking about. I just want to get this in. Oh, please be big. Please be just right. Please be just right. Please be. Yes! Yes! That's awesome. 
So I'm gonna just stabilize it a little bit more. Put it into like the corner. Yeah, exactly. And remember guys, this is just gonna be a temporary abode for these critters. All right, so we just wanna do what's gonna give them enough enrichment, places to move, things like that. Because like I said, in a few days, I'm gonna start tackling a, a proper iguana habitat. But I really love these because they've come in handy. And these work amazingly well if you have small lizards or even offspring of some of the larger ones. So it's really helpful to have these. All right, so let's continue and do this. Just unlock it, let's get some, hmm. Mm -hmm. This one with this on top. Yeah, I think you're right. I like it. I like it. So first we'll put this sucker in and we'll lean it up against kind of that. Right? Yep. Okay. Now we take this sucker. <laughs> you good? I'm good. I don't want to clobber anybody. <laughs> That is a beef stick. It's a beef stick, dude. Uh, you know what? There you go. I think. There you I think go. It, I think it works. That works. I think it works. That is it's perfect. Solid. That's the other thing, guys. You want to make sure it's solid. Yes, it uh, doesn't And fall it is on. definitely solid. These are smaller lizards, so we're not going to have too much of an issue. So I figure I'll feed them on the bottom. Um, water will be in the bottom. This will be a cool basking area. Uh, we'll have our basking lamp here, and then we're going to have a one big UVB light on top. So I'm really not going to want to open the tops uh, too much more. So let's go ahead and we'll close the tops. We should get them a hiding area too. So they feel secure. So we're gonna close the tops because we're gonna put them in through the bottom. Now, let's see, let's get the first UVB thing on it. Got any plugs back there? I do, there's perfect amount of plugs for this thing and I also have strips. So like I said, we're gonna have the UVB just rest on the top. Now. Where is it? Okay, it's gonna go a little, where's my outlets are right there. That's good. I like that placement. Tilt that in, I'm gonna have to sweep this floor, but whatever. So let's do it. All right, so in the time that Tom made that edit, we assembled the Lewis Iguana's habitat and we got the rhino iguanas habitat ready. So let's go ahead and get a little, let's shut these doors though. Now, here's what's going on. The reason I'm doing this, I've been saying it throughout the entire video. I don't want to lose these guys. No, you're going to come back in because I'm going to shut these doors. Uh -huh. Yeah, see, see? Those that? doors. These doors, okay? Gotcha. We are now locked in. Now they can scurry around the boxes, but at least I know this is definitely them, their light. Uh, at least I know I'll be able to get them. Now these guys are bitey. Uh, they, they tried to nail me so they're not tamed up, but I'm hoping that living in close proximity to me and when I build them a large enclosure uh, in not too long, these guys are going to go ahead and tame up nicely. A lot of the guys is patience. When they're young like this, when they're babies like this, you hear that? When yeah. they're babies like this, they're going to think that they are prey, that you are some kind of predator and you're going to try and eat them. Uh, but we just need them to realize that that's not the case. So a lot of that, a lot of them calming down happens when they get older, and they get more secure in themselves. Uh, sounds funny, but it's actually true. As the lizards get bigger, they become more secure. All right, so to, uh, they need Paul's help, but so here they oh are. Oh my God. Wait, are those are the rhinos. I was gonna They're say, this ones. is so light. Oh man, I didn't do that. I, I went like this, and these are well, so should we light. Just put the rhinos yeah, in let's first? put them in. Let's put the rhinos in first. Uh, here we go, guys. We're gonna put the rhinos in. They have lunatics. Oh, yeah, they're not too big. They're not too big. Um, but, you know, it's gonna be challenging because they a bite from this. A bite from that. A bite from them. We let that one do the thing. Okay, here's the male. Yep. Oh, he is not happy. Sharp, dude. sharp claws right now on these guys. Gosh. Oh my gosh. And you can see. You want to be careful because you see his nose is red. Um, yeah. 
he was kind of actually bashing his little face. So you guys have seen Guapo and Lola, and you've met Petro and Petra, my other rhino and and they're much more calm. So we're gonna work with them, but they are beautiful, aren't they? When they get bigger, they'll be nicer. Oh, absolutely. But you see how they're wagging that tail? He's trying to yeah. whip me. And if you grab the tail, don't grab the tail when they're yeah. hiding like that because they can drop it. Oh, so really? you don't want, you don't yeah. want to grab the tail. Uh, I don't want them to drop their tail, but he's all puffed up, he's mad, he's restrained. So I'm gonna have to ask you to open up. Uh, yeah. That I got you. and we're just gonna put him in. I'm gonna put him up on the uh, branch. Ow, he's whipping me really good. Whoa, get it shut quick. <laughs> he didn't want to go on that branch. What a plane in the neck. Now I gotta put up this gal who's over here. Hi, young lady. That's why you close the doors. Right? Yeah, and you know what's, what's really good? Is, uh, what's good? Is, oh, ha! You don't want to get bit by a rhino, let me tell you. Even though they're vegetarians, that's the gaping maw of death. That'll hurt. They're all jawbone. They're all muscle. All right, so let's go ahead and put her. Wow, they're really not friendly. No, not at all. So that's why I figured having them in this room, uh, they'll see us walking through the glass. I'll come in. I'll be feeding them. I'll be doing all that good stuff. But they'll have a little privacy. Now I am going to add an area for them to kind of relax. You know, like a little hide area. Yeah. So they'll be they'll be a little more secure. So let's just let them relax and let's move on to the next pair or next species. The are Ooh, these calmer? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I know nothing. I, I literally just met these animals today when I got them out of their habitat. So I don't know what to tell you. But let's see. Let's keep snipping away. Kind of a fun video. You get to the end. Yeah, it is loves, crazy. Everyone loves setting up more animals. And that's why, guys, when you get an animal, Make sure that you're really ready for the commitment. Not to say that my buddy wasn't. He's gotten more into the uh, tortoises. It's something that he feels more secure with. They're a little bit more chill like he is. And these lizards, you know, he just may have bitten off more than he can chew. Because it really takes patience to work with some of these cyclora. And if you don't love it, you're not gonna be successful at it. So let's see. Oh, look at that. These guys are much smaller. Oh my god. Let's see if I can do a double grab with that little bit. These are the little size. Yeah! That's how you double grab lizards, folks, without getting bit. Uh, but look at these two. Are these beautiful or what? Woo! Alright, so here's the male, and here's the female. And I can tell because the male, you can look, he's got bulges right there. If you can focus in on that, those are the penguins. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll secrete like <laughs> some musk and they'll also pee and you know, they're a little nervous right now. All right, my hands are full, buddy. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll let them out. Oh, easy guys, easy, easy. There you go. There they were much more chill. Much, much more chill. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. We just showed you how you can set up fairly basic uh, cyclora habitat. Remember, these are um, juveniles, so they like to climb more. Uh, we're going to get a larger habitat for the rhino iguanas and for these guys to grow up in because I feel if you have a larger enclosure that you can walk into and be part of that area with them, they'll get more and more used to you and it'll be really good. One thing I also want to notice is we've got the UVB lighting, okay, so we're getting a full spectrum lighting. What I've done is because I don't have basking lights, I'm using these ceramic heat emitters. It's providing the basking heat. The, the basking lights put off heat, right? Well, we've got the full spectrum light, we've got heat here, so they're getting both that they need. Eventually, I'm going to go ahead and add a bulb to this, but it's what I had uh, in the uh, supply ch chest right now. I have to take a run to the... Yeah, this was an out of nowhere type thing, right? Yeah, the, <laughs> today I, I was at the gym. I can't say I'm sad to have cut leg day short, but I got an email, called the gentleman up, found out he lived six miles from where I was at in the gym. And now look at this, guys. We've got two, uh, four new members of the Camp Kennan family, the Lewis Eye and the Rhino of Lungs. And I'm uh, going to ask you guys, go on uh, down in the comments, help me name these guys, okay? So let's figure out some good names for these Rhino of Lungs and for the Cyclora, the little Lewis Eye down there. They're going to be a big part of this family here at the camp. Uh, also, don't forget to go on over to patreon.com slash Camp if you like the videos. Help support us, we'd really appreciate it. And I'm really trying to up my Instagram game, guys. So go on over to Instagram, follow along at Camp Ken in there. Lots of fun videos. And as always, I want to thank my good buddy Paul Kafaro for filming today. Go check out his channel if you haven't already. He does a lot of fun stuff with animals. He likes to build things too. So we might do a video helping him 
get ready for his own lizard. What do you think, guys? Should Paul get a lizard? I'm gonna answer that for you, yes. Okay, <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.